Hey everybody, Mr. Troy here. What we're going to do today is we're going to take points and we're going to put them on an XY coordinate plane. It's time for graphs with Mr. Troy. Okay, we're going to be looking at absolute value graphs and quadratic graphs in what is called vertex form. Whenever we look at an absolute value in vertex form, we are going to convert it so that there is a number out front and no coefficient of x inside, and then an added number out back. This is going to make the easiest sort of a way to graph. Here's the reason for this. What I have here are three graphs in purple, the parent function of the absolute value. In black, the absolute value stretched to be twice as wide. And in red, the absolute value function reflected and also made three times as tall. It is a lot easier to just talk about differences in height than it is to talk about differences in height and differences in width at the same time. So we are going to always convert so that we're only looking at uh, vertical stretches. It's gonna make life a lot easier than to have to think about a vertical stretch and a horizontal stretch or shrink or all of those things put together. So here is an example of a starting function. And in order to graph it, I'm going to factor out the one half first just away from the x, then I'm going to factor it out of the absolute value. Now mathematically the way that you do that is you factor out the absolute value of one half. So there are two absolute values in here. The absolute value of 1 half is just 1 half. So that would end up being 3 halves times x minus 4 plus 1. The reason I included the absolute value here is because if this had been negative 1 half, for example, we would have still pulled it out as a positive 1 half because of the absolute value. So the reason that this is helpful is because now we know that this is the same as the parent function, except shifted four units to the right, one unit up, and three halves times as tall. Hey, I'm over here now. So the reason we do this is that it makes graphing really, really easy. This is called vertex form because thinking about those translations are going to help us find the vertex quite easily. The vertex is normally at 0, 0. That's for the parent function, because you know the absolute value of 0 is 0. But if we shift that 4 units to the right and 1 unit up, we're going to have a vertex of 4, 1. I suppose it would probably be helpful if I said 1 unit up as opposed to 1 unit right. So four units to the right, one unit up. Then the way that the steepness is going to work is that we are going to think of that the same way that we think of slope. So up three, right two, up three, right two. But a vertex is a turning point so all of the points to the left of the vertex are up three, back two. Up three, back two. So that's what our absolute value graph will end up looking like. And again, the three halves shows up on an absolute value graph looking like slope for one side of the equation. Okay, time to look at another example. I don't know why I said one side of the equation. What I meant was one side of the vertex.
Sorry about that. Okay, so here's how you would put all of this into practice. Start by factoring away from x internally the negative 2, still inside the absolute value function. So that would leave me with x minus 4. I know that it's minus 4 because negative 2 times negative 4 makes 8. Okay, then I'm going to factor that out as an absolute value. You might feel like you're comfortable skipping this step at some point. Then I'm going to take the absolute value of that number. So the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. And I'm going to multiply. OK, so that's how I convert. And then after I convert, I'm going to find the vertex. So four units to the right, six units up. That's here. And to the right side of my vertex, I'm going to act like the slope is negative 4. Now, I can't technically call that slope because I'm a math teacher and the math police would come after me. But for that ray on the right side, it acts exactly like slope. So the right side of the vertex looks just like the line. It's technically a ray because it's only one half. On the left side, we're going to go down four, back one. And it makes that, you know, either A or V shape that you're used to. You probably saw in an introductory algebra class. And there's our graph. Easy peasy, as the kids say. Okay, what's up next is graphing quadratics in vertex form, which I love and there's a shortcut for. So I'm going to start by making a table. Hey, movie magic. Then I'm going to figure out the y values for all of those. So what is the y value when you square negative 3? What is the y value when you square negative 2? What is the y value when you square negative 1? Oh, hey, movie magic again. And now I'm going to plot those points. Now I know you couldn't see because I paused it and it's all movie magic again, but I did get that one on my first try and I almost never get these on my first try. So if you've got to erase and write it a couple times, that's fine. The name for this shape is a parabola. The name for the equation is quadratic. Quad sharing the same sort of thing as like quadrilateral, which comes from the square part. Now, in order to graph these, we're going to memorize a pattern. And I'll put that pattern on the screen. So the pattern here has to do with the distance between each step. The vertical distance between the first two points is 1. The vertical distance between the next two points is 3. The vertical distance between the next two points is 5. We can see that in the table as well. From 0 to 1 is 1, from 1 to 4 is 3, and from 4 to 9 is 5. So the next distance in that pattern would have to be plus 7, and 9 plus 7 is 16. Well, that fits because 16 is 4 squared. So we call this pattern the 1, 3, 5, 7 rule. So an equation in vertex form is going to look like this. And this is why we waited until after we learned completing the square to, uh, to graph these, because now you can see that this looks a whole lot like completing the square. So you're going to find the vertex the same way that you did for the absolute value. The vertex of the parent function is at the origin, but this one is shifted two units right and nine units down, so the vertex is two, negative nine.
So the way that we plot from here is we use this 1, 3, 5, 7 rule. Instead of doing what we did with absolute value where we just went up by a straight line, here we're going to go over one step up one, then over the next step up three, then over the next step up five, then over the next step up seven. And obviously you go until you run out of space. Then you return to your vertex and you do the same thing in the opposite direction. Back one, up five. Back one, sorry, up one. Back one, up three. Back one, up five. And back one, up seven. And that's how you make your graph. And there it is. There's just a little bit of vocabulary that I want you to write down. So go ahead and pause the video and write down this vocabulary and we'll of course talk about it in class. Okay, so pause the video. And then go ahead and write this down as well, these four things. All right, folks, I hope that was helpful. There's still much to talk about. There's, there's still more for us to say, but that is a good start for how to graph in vertex form. Everybody hang in there. Have a good one. I will see you soon. Bye.